Hi guys, Anne from UK Fountain Pens here to talk you through the Anoto Simple Overlay. This is a really unusual pen. You don't see many overlay pens around. Uh, they, they're a real artisan, uh, handmade feel to a pen. What it involves is uh, there is real sterling silver, it's hallmarked, um, fitted to an underlying acrylic pen body here. So you get very raised tactile feel as well as this contrast of the shiny precious metal over the uh, dark black underlay. Um, you buy this pen as an heirloom. There are, this is a sort of lasting pen, like a, you know, your family silver. And so you expect this to be a, a piece that you live with and that ages with you and you hand down to your children. That's the kind of vibe I get from it. If you like the aesthetics, then it's a, a real beautiful piece. It has these tendrils of hand engraved, like jungle leaves and 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 flowers uh, around it, and it reminds me of the the Yarda Lead uh, Grand Victorian more than anything else. I think it's a very striking piece. Uh, I think it might be a little uh, artisan for me personally, for my my aesthetic taste. You know, I prefer something like the very clean and crisp Mont Blanc Faulkner here. Um, that said, I, I appreciate the, the work and the skill that's gone into it, and I'm a sucker for sterling, sterling silver, as regular readers will know. However, when you buy a, a pen that's made by a master craftsman, you expect a sort of certain enduring solidity to it. Certainly the sterling silver pens I've got, like the Mont Blanc Martelet, you know, it feels like a well-oiled uh, solid machine that that will outlast you. Same for the Otto Hut Design C that snicks into position when everything's shut. I don't get that feel from the simple overlay, uh, and it it doesn't give me the same sort of lasting feeling as I get even from a plastic Anoto Magna. The best example of that is the the cap. In fact, that's the the primary area of concern I have here. Firstly, aesthetically, the cap is actually narrower than the barrel. Not even, not the underlay even, but the, the overlay included. And it wobbles and creaks when it's in place. And that's because it's a friction fit mechanism. If I pull the cap off, I get a creaking and a, and a crunching sound from the very, very thin acrylic lip, which then needs to squeeze into place to stay on. I, I, it just doesn't give me a great feeling that this cap can wobble about. Um, actually, it functions perfectly. The cap doesn't come off, uh, nor does it dry out. Uh, and it's very convenient just to be able to pull the cap off. I am concerned about the pulling effect of that cap on these very, very, very fine section threads. And I have to uh, say that I have heard from a previous owner that um, these threads stripped and the section came out when she pulled the cap off. I haven't been able to replicate that myself. I don't think this is a major design flaw, but going back to what I said about this being a heritage piece that you would hand down, uh, the underlying acrylic I don't think is as strong as it could be. What about the writing experience? Now this is a uh, quite distinctively shaped pen, as you can see. This is a long, thin pen with a very thin pinched section, very short section, and a small nib. Uh, compare it to the other end of the spectrum, like a Sailor King pen, and you can really see how much narrower that experience is. Um, the way I tend to hold this pen is by the barrel, uh, kind of up here, maybe drifting halfway halfway between. I don't hold it down here. It's not a huge pen, uh, and it's the, the silver. You can feel the raised effect under your fingers, but it's not uncomfortable. Um, actually, the the overall balance and weight is not as heavy as I would expect it, given the uh, density of silver. The cap should post. There is this, you know, a step down, on the, uh, but I'm not going to try and stress the uh, the plastic putting that on there. So uh, I, I much prefer the comfort of the Magna, but I understand that this is a, a different pen going for a different aesthetic experience. Um, how about the writing? Well, the nib is small. Uh, it's a number three, what Anoto calls a number three size. It's gold, uh, it's 18 karat gold and um, uh, two colored. 
It's very pretty. It's got the usual Anoto styling to it. It doesn't write, in my experience, as well as the number sevens. It's fairly soft. There is line variation and bounce. Um, when I got it, it was a bit dry. Uh, it improved in use, and also I gave it a little bit of encouragement. Uh, and now the flow is great, so it keeps up. Uh, there is a bit of noise and feedback that you can hear. It's very scratchy on the reverse. It's a perfectly good writing experience, and actually I, I've ended up enjoying it quite a lot during the weeks that I've had it on loan. Um, the flow is now decent, and I'm enjoying the way it performs. I would say I still prefer the, the number 7 Anoto nibs, which are more or less my favourite gold nibs. So, come to the final point, which is the, the price of this pen. It retails for £1,200, which by anyone's measure is, is a lot of money. Uh, for that same price, the Mont Blanc Martelet was available, and I personally prefer the Martelet. It feels like a, a much more uh, manufactured piece with the integral piston filler um, and, and the Mont Blanc solidity. The Anoto feels like much more of an artisan handcrafted piece with its little uh, foibles and creaks and uh, uh, inconsistencies. You may like that. I personally find it it gets on my nerves a little bit in terms of what I want from a pen. I expect something to be really um, you know, pristine, fit perfectly. And the little creaky cap uh, and the, the little sort of I don't know whether you can see, but the, the number 15 stamped here on the band, the numerals aren't lined up because they were hand stamped. Um, that that bothers me slightly. I like seeing the hand effect, but at the same time, I want the perfection of uh, of a machine-made piece. Or even something like the, the Graf Classic, which is you know, hand-made. It has hand steps involved, but the end result is, is even and perfect. Um, so really... I return to where I started. This is a very unusual pen. I'm not quite sure how to judge it because it doesn't compare against all the other machine-made pens out there. Um, the last point to note is that there are only about 10 of these pens left from what Anoto tells me. Henry Simpole passed away uh, last year, I believe, so there won't be any more from his uh, artisan hands. Uh, so if this appeals to you, there's really uh, little time left. Jump on it. For me, I, I appreciate the experience I've had of trying it out, and thanks to Anoto for sharing it with me, but I don't think it's one for my personal collection. Thanks for watching.